Hey, hey, math friends. So our learning target today is I can solve equations resulting from proportional rel relationships. So we learned yesterday that we're talking about the relationship of when the y-intercept is zero. So when that happens, then we can take cross products, this thing called cross products, which you probably have learned in elementary school. So what are the steps for finding unknown unknowns? We're going to talk about how we approach this idea of cross products. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to set up a table. Then I'm going to ask you to take cross products, which I'm going to walk you through. It's also shown on the um, problem of above, up above, but I think I'll just walk you through it. Then I'm going to ask you to solve. And then, of course, we would want to check to make sure that we think that that makes sense. So our work today is to set up the table, then take cross products, and then solve. So... Let's start with these ones. Now, all of you, well, actually, let's not. I don't think we're gonna start with those ones. So let's start by setting up the tea table. You can buy three t-shirts for $24. So the two things that I'm hearing are t-shirts and dollars. Now, it doesn't matter which side you put which thing. Um, they'll just get the two variables in the table in any order. So we have three t-shirts for $24. That's a data point. Write and solve in a proportion for the cost of buying seven t-shirts. So we know that we have seven t-shirts. So we are gonna put the seven in the t-shirt column. So we're gonna put the seven in the t-shirt column. So what we want to know is what does it cost for seven t-shirts? So our variable then would go for cost. So some of you would be able to see that we could multiply by eight to top and bottom. But as we work through some of these other ones, they're not gonna be as easy to do that. So some of you already have figured out in your head that it's $56 for seven t-shirts. But I want you to learn how to do this thing called cross products. So as we go to one, get to ones that aren't as easy to do, and mental math, we're able to do that. So cross products means basically we're going to do what it says. Take a, We're going to go across and take the product, which means to multiply. When we smash those things together, we end up with 3 times x. Now in math, we do not need a multiplication sign when we're going to multiply a number and a variable. So we can just kind of push those together. And then we're going to multiply the other diagonal. So across, we're going to multiply across, set them equal to each other. So that is 7 times 24 is 168. Now from that point on, we're going to build house, build fence, clean yard, clean yard, which we've done a million times. So we would say that x is equal to 168 divided by 3 is $56, which is what some of you already got in your head. So we're saying that seven t-shirts we figured out was $56. So that's called setting up a tea table and taking cross products. So that might have been easy for you, which is fine and which is good. I do want you to be able to show your work and take cross products. So the next one. Last month you purchased two apps for $9. So I'm hearing apps and I'm hearing dollars. Two naps, two apps, nine dollars. Write and solve a proportion for this month if you purchase three apps. So we're gonna put the three in the app section, just like we did up above. Now some of you maybe can do this in your head. Some of you may maybe, maybe are able to see that we're multiplying by 4.5. I'm guessing most of you are not gonna be able to do that in your head. So this is why I showed you how to do cross products in the previous example. So you're able to take care of that when you get to a problem like this. So we're going to multiply the diagonal, which is called multiply across. The product means multiply, so 2x. Multiply the other diagonal. 3 times 9 is 27. Then we build house, build fence, clean yard, clean yard. So we have 27 divided by 2. Feel free to throw that in your calculator or if on your cell phone you have a calculator, that's fine. So that becomes $13.50. Go ahead and pause the video if that's too fast. So we just came up with that 3 
t-shirts cost thirteen dollars and fifty cents. Three t-shirts, thirteen fifty. There's our second proportion. Cost products. Yay! All right, let's try another one. I'm gonna come back to that one. I'm gonna come back to that one. So why don't you try this top one? Actually try both of those and then we'll come back as a group. So go ahead and push pause, try both of those. All right, you should have tried that. So we're kind of see how you did. 15 miles in 2.5 hours. So we have miles compared to hours. Again, it doesn't matter which side you put that on the table. 15 miles, 2.5 hours. How many miles would she need to run on Tuesday if she runs for four hours? So we're going to put that in the hours section. The variable is going to move to a different location that time, this time, which is no big deal. We still are going to multiply cross products. I like to start wherever the X is, but that doesn't matter. And I like to put the number in front called the coefficient. So that becomes 2.5 times X. Smash them together. Then we multiply the other diagonal, which is 15 times 4 is 60. Now you might be able to see a little more why we were not doing all of these in our head. It's not as easy to do. So the operation then is division. Copy, paste, copy, paste. So we end up getting x is equal to 24. And the units on that would be 24 miles. So if we were to talk about that as a data point, it would be 24 miles in four hours. So 24 miles in four hours would be our answer to that situation. Hopefully you did really well on that problem. You can give yourself a big star. Let's try the problem on the bottom. You should have already solved it. If not, pause and solve now. Let's make sure you're trying these. It's important that you know how to do proportions. A school requires two computers for every five students. So what I'm hearing there are computers and students. Any order is fine. Two computers, five students. Write a proportion that gives the number of computers needed for 145 students. So we take cross products then. We're going to start with the X. We're going to multiply. And we're going to multiply the other side. So we have 2 times 145. Some of you can do that in your head. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Is 290. Build house, build fence, clean yard, clean yard. We end up getting that X is equal to 290 divided by 5 is, type it in, type it in. is 58. So we're saying is 58 computers, 145 students. So we have 58 computers for 145 students, cross products. All right, let's go try these kind of weird, goofy situations here. I think I'm gonna try this one first. All right, so the mixture of red paint to blue paint is three to five. This is a really important question to cover during the video because it does come up a lot. So we are, I'm hearing that we are mixing red paint and blue paint of a relationship of three to five. It's, we read that in order. So three for red, five for blue. So that's called a ratio. How many red paint parts would you need if you had 30 parts of blue paint 30 parts of blue so 30 parts of blue how many parts of red now some of you might see in the pattern in the table is we can multiply down by six in the table giving us a red of 18 parts but i'm going to say that i didn't i didn't notice that so i take cross products smash those together and i multiply those Divide by five, copy, paste, copy, paste. And I end up with 18 parts red. So when I do that, I end up with 18 parts red to 30 parts blue. 
using that ratio. Remember that first sentence, we just read it in order. Make sure you're reading it in order. All right, group. So this might be our last problem. We'll see how this one goes. Feel free to pause video, rewind if you're stuck. The ratio of sixth graders to eighth graders on the math team is one to six. Check that out. So we're comparing the sixth graders and the eighth graders on the math team, which is a ratio of one to six. If there are nine sixth graders on the math team, how many eighth graders are on the team? You can see in this one, I'm multiplying down the table by nine. If you didn't notice that, that's okay. So we get one X equals 54. Not much to solve here. I could divide by one, but that's a waste of time. So we are saying that we have 54 eighth graders. Whoops, I better redo that. We are saying that we have nine sixth graders to 54 eighth graders on the math team. So that would be the relationship that we have on the math team. So our job today basically is to set up any proportionate situation and take cross products. I'm not going to do those. They're way too easy for you. And I don't think I'm going to do those. So just a reminder to set up your table and then simply take cross products. That's our learning target for today on solving equations resulting from proportionate situations. Have a glorious night.